Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts. Uh, listen, I'm sorry if I've been talking about this just a little too much on the channel, but this is the last time I'm talking about Magistus until this card actually gets revealed on December 7th, so bookmark that day because I have a bookmark. I'm super stoked to find out what this card actually does, and that's the whole crux of what this whole video is, as I'm talking about uh, where, are, where I think Magistus is, the implications of this card and if this card comes through in the ways I would I hope it comes through based on its effects and the way it works hopefully tying Magistus all the way together and that that's kind of my overall point here is even though I've gotten a lot of good stuff recently I'm still not convinced Magistus is there yet but this card can do it by itself if this is the right card and they hit all three bullet points I'm gonna cover here that I that I think like this card could and should be um i think we can be looking at magistus as not even just a rogue deck but maybe even just a straight up legitimate like powerful option into future formats uh and i think that's so cool because i've always liked magistus i've loved the way it works uh and konami's finally been getting them payoffs so for all the stuff that we've gotten so recently right we've gotten chorozo and snake eyes damned dragon these cards are huge actually these cards are like like i don't want to understate how powerful these cards are for for magistus magistus was so good at getting all these free monsters equipped to your monsters on your field and you just couldn't really do much with them right like artemis is a great card while it's equipped and almost none of the other ones are great. There's small utility effects here and there. These cards actually give you legit payoff and board presence for getting those cards equipped. It turned those cards into actual pluses, whereas before they were there, but they weren't real pluses. Like, yes, you got an extra card on the field, but it wasn't doing anything for you. Now it is. These cards are huge. Spoon, maybe the single most important card we've gotten so far. It's a Rota for the deck that also gets you a free equip afterwards. It's a raw plus one in this deck. This card's incredible. Every turn you should be going through this card. He's beautiful. He's incredible. Uh, you have the new Crowley. Um, I talked about this a while ago on what I wanted to see for Magistus down the line. I said a main deck extender. We have so many ways to search the bad Crowley that already existed. You may still have to play that card at one, depending on how the deck shakes out. But this card is still an improvement over him. So uh, we do get an upgrade at main deck extender. Still a good card and pairs so nicely with our new fusion because uh, he, he jumps on the field and he just fuses you, uh, fuses for you. So he's two out of the three requirements to make your fusion boss monster, which I love. And speaking of which, this guy's awesome. He's a really welcome piece. Um, honestly, he's icing on the cake. I didn't even think we were going to get any more cards aside from the link too. And then he showed up at the end of premium pack 25. He's awesome. He, he, he's just such a nice upgrade over Iwas. Iwas is so mid. And I was still probably going to end up playing Iwas. Uh, but I was gonna, not going to feel great about it. I was like, we, we probably have to. Uh, just because it's the, it's an interruption. It's a decent interruption. But it's just like, that's all it does. It's just exactly that. This guy's just so much more. He's removal. He's an extra resource. He is a monster negate that not only negates but then can pop any card on the field afterwards like he's it's a great card good interruption good removal good utility he's just a good main like boss monster uh welcome to the deck and and maybe i even gets cut from here going forward i don't even know for sure but it's possible and finally you have the new uh, quick play spell i think the other spell is unplayably bad i i really think it's ass i i i have a hard time seeing myself playing that card if it was a quick play different story it's not that's not the discussion for today uh and then this card this card is cool utility this is the one on the least positive will will actually be played in the deck depending on the version but i still think you look at it and you consider it um when you're building the deck so i still like it overall so we've gotten out so many good things I and mean, we we're talking about six cards already and here comes the seventh the link to so that brings me to this point we started we started out with it at the top but this is where we're at i still think even with all these really nice pieces for the deck this close man it really like I, I really think like this deck is that close to just actually being able to do it do the damn thing and be a legit competitive strategy in the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! but there's three things i think i need this card to have the first thing materials uh as far as the materials this card takes they just need to not screw us over uh, like i wouldn't even be pissed if it said two three like two magistus monsters I hope they don't do that, just because, like, just the whole lore behind the archetype is that it's it's supposed to be the origin of, like, Endymion and Magistus and and Invoked and Spellbooks and, Mag and then, like, Magistus is where it all started. Like, it's literally supposed to be the culmination of all spellcaster archetypes, basically. And so, like, 
to make it Magistus exactly, I, I don't know, man. Just make it two spellcasters. It opens up a lot of other things. It forces us not to have to make Artemis sometimes if you're playing other spellcaster engines. And just cuts out like annoying steps. So I hope it's just two spellcasters. I don't think that breaks the deck by any, like breaks the card by any means, especially if they make this card specific to Magistus. And of course, we know with these types of links, if they just say like when you use this card you can only summon spellcaster monsters this turn and if it's that like a, a really solid effect then i'm like cool that's what magistus does anyway um and you you keep this card from being de degenerate and allowing decks to do like really stupid dumb stuff so i'm cool with that so i, I want i'd like the materials to be two spellcasters even if they go the magistus route i won't be pissed but like they just seem to not like make it weird and not make sense like like this is technically an endymion card make it don't make it require an endymion monster or i'd be livid i'd actually be livid um so yeah that's the first thing is the materials make the materials somewhat generic so that way the card is flexible enough we can get into it with flexible means second thing it's on field effect is super important this is maybe the most important effect but i i'd argue the the second effect the last thing is going to be the most important thing on field, I would just love for this card to do something that connects us to the engine. Artemis helps us search for a Magistus. I think Artemis only searches for Magistus monsters. Don't quote me on that. I think Artemis is monsters only. And so because Artemis, because I believe Artemis is monsters only, um, I would really like it if this card allowed us, when it's summoned or just on field when you make it, it allows you to search for a Magistus spell or trap. I think one thing that's kind of getting lost here is the spells and traps because the only way we search them is Vare, and Vare is like your worst starter. She's technically a starter, but like Zor was a better starter. Uh, uh, if you open Spoon, you're probably just spooning for Zorua because he's the better starter. Like Vare is still a solid card, but they all take your normal. Well, Zorua and her take your normal, and she's just kind of outclassed by him overall. So. It does put us in a weird position where I'm just kind of like, ah, she's really the only way to act access spell and traps. This does give us another way to do that. And because right now just accessing them is not like the the thing you do every single turn, I think some people are going to look at cutting a lot of them because they aren't like out of this world crazy. They're like decent cards, right? Like I like Theurgy. I like Vritra. But Trees Magistus and, and Invocation are like interesting, but like I'm not totally sure they're going to be worth it in the end like those are cards that people are going to look to just cut from this deck that they're trying to give support to and like you know what i mean they want the old cards to still be playable i think there's a way to do that if the, if it feels like the cards are like just free like in any given like turn you're just getting them for free um i think it makes those cards feel more worth it um and so i i hope it's something like that i think it could be that i think you could just make it equip something when it's summoned but like you're probably going through artemis before you go into this anyway so it's like if you're not equipping Artemis to search, then, like, what are you equipping? Like, you know what I mean? The, we know all the other equip effects are kind of underwhelming. Um, so I'd rather just get me something from extra deck, and then you kind of have... Or, uh, sorry, a spell or trap from deck, and then you get you have some utility there of, like, Retra as an extender. Uh, Theurgy to get something equipped if you want, or it's a quick place you can set it. The new quick play, which can either foolish a spell caster or spell or whatever or wait for your opponent so you, that way you can eat telly like there's there's multiple different pieces of utility there um so i would really appreciate that I, th I think that's the way i would like to see it work and the last thing i mean they, they could make it just like a, a a double helix as well like that's that, that may just be too broken and i'm just i i'm okay if it's not too broken but i just want it to be good they could just make it summon a magistus from deck so even if this doesn't search fellow traps if most of your lines go through zoro first are you just summoning Vare off of this and then Vare's getting you? So then you're getting the extra body and the Speller Trap. Maybe that's too good. I don't know, but like that's another route they could go. Um, and then the last thing, the last effect that I think is really important, the equip effect. So, so far it seems like the, the fusions are the only ones that either have like almost no equip effects at all. Chirozo and the new Zorwa do not have, I believe, a quick uh, an effect while they're equipped at all. And uh, Iwas is like almost nothing right he just he gives like a 1000 boost whatever he's equipped to uh which in modern day is just not like almost negligible um so here's the last thing and, I, and i've been asking for this for a while i just think this, this would add just such an awesome wrinkle to the deck and like really allow the deck to truly play in the mid-range like so nice now give it 
a very mid interruption effect. I've said this for so long. I want an equip monster that is a, that is a just it, it meets that bare threshold of like you know it's a real interruption, but it's like the weakest form of it. So I'm talking an imperm effect. While it's equipped, you can target a monster on the field and negate it till the end of the turn. I'm talking a farfa effect or sp little knight second effect, whatever you want to call that. Like uh, target a monster on the field, banish it till the end of this turn, and then it comes back. So it's not even permanent removal or like a targeting pop. I mean, give it a dryden, which in modern day is just not that crazy right like it targets so there's some dodging potential and play around uh it destroys and sends to grave so like you know what i mean like like so many things float so many things have graveyard effects like like you're not like you know what i mean those those are the weakest forms of interaction that are real interruptions in Yu-Gi-Oh. give it one of those effects and then it allows it as the deck to play in the mid range it allows you to give like a little extra backbone to the zorua uh links uh, or fusion and synchro sorry not links but fusion and your boss monsters and even if you're not summoning boss monsters like even in a world where you get like for example buster locked like like a, a, you are locked out of the extra or you get fool lost and you're like oh i don't really want to give my opponent draws can i just normal summon zora zoro effect uh equip this and then like zoro is just a walking dried it now and i'm like you know what you, you get no draws and i'm gonna end on a dried it you know, you nagged one, and now I have two hand traps in hand and a Dryden. Come and beat me. Like, you know what I mean? It just allows you to do things like that and play in the mid-range, play in simplified board states where otherwise you wouldn't have been able to. So I think that would be the coolest thing. I, I think that would be such an, such an awesome wrinkle for the deck. And to be honest, that may be the single most important thing because even if the effect on field is ass, like you never even want to summon this card because it does nothing on field, and its materials are dumb. And it literally says, you need a Magistus and an Endymion specifically. I was like, how are we doing a Endymion consistently in the deck? Um, it wouldn't matter if it just has the interruption effect as the as the final effect because you would still play it because you just get to equip it for free and like boom it's an extra it's going to be a bonus interruption on any play you do so i'd still be okay with it so there you go those are my three pointers if it hits all three it's a 10 out of 10 no questions asked and i think it immediately makes the deck uh like high rogue if not even higher than that depending on exactly how they do it and, and which ones they actually do, which parts of the three they actually do, you know, I still, like, I, they're not going to make this terrible, but, like, I, you know what I mean? It just depends on how they go about it, but I have a hard time seeing this being worse than, like, a 7 out of 10 if they just, like, made it decent. But this is it, man. This is the one. Uh, and there's a world where they make more support down the line because it, the, technically they still have more, uh, uh, more chapters to go for OCG stories for, for Magistus, but... I don't know. We're coming to the end of the year. This is the last thing announced for Magistus. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if this is it. And they're just kind of going to finish everything up at the end of 2025 and no more new cards for the, you know, the OCG story stuff aside from maybe like some lore stuff that isn't even actually pertain to the deck like they did with Sky Striker. They got a bunch of cards that were lore cards for Sky Striker, but they, they weren't even close to playable level. So this is it. This is Konami's chance to do it one more card and if it does if it hits the right buttons it can tie this entire archetype together and this archetype can finally take off like it never ever ever had the chance before so i hope they do that i'll keep you posted here you're not gonna see any more magistas talk from me until december 7th but man i am watching that date like a hawk and i am ready to see it uh i have high hopes for it not even gonna lie uh you know what i mean and maybe that just means i'll be let down but Sometimes you gotta, sometimes it's better to have loved and lost to know, to, than to have never loved at all, you know? It's one of those, but uh, there you go. I'm out of here today, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. Thanks for listening to me ramble about an archetype I really, really like, and I really hope Konami does justice with this final card. They've done so good so far, they just have to finish it. They just have to finish strong, and it's just, they need to get a 7 out of 10 on this final card, and we might be there. But until we see it, we won't know. Nice watch. Peace.